In this video, I'd like to show you how to add maximum and minimum lines of best fit to a linearized graph. Now, I've got some data here. This happens to be for physics. It's a ball drop experiment. Students have dropped the ball from different heights, measured the time to hit the ground, and then to linearize it, they've squared the time value. And so the plot we've made is this one here. So there's distance along the bottom, time squared up the side. Now, error bars have been added to the graph from the uncertainty measurements in the uh, original data. Now, I've made a video on how to add error bars, custom error bars. In this video, I just want to show you how to work out maximum and minimum lines of best fit. Now, <clears throat> there are graphs around, or there are programs around that can do this using Excel, but this one I want to do it uh, manually. So I'm just going to add a line of maximum the maximum gradient. So I start at the bottom of my error bar down here and then I draw a line with maximum gradient to the top of the error bar there. Now I check to make sure the line is within all the error bars and you can see it certainly is. Okay so the next thing to do is to calculate the maximum or the, the uh, gradient of that um, line of best fit. So it's change in y divided by change in x. So the change in y will be from this value here, which is 1.1, which I've written up here, down to 0.04. So that's 0.04. So the change in y <coughs> is 1.1 minus 0.04. The change in x is from 5 down to 0.5. <coughs> so that gives a, a gradient of 0.236. Now I can repeat that for the minimum line of best fit. So I'll add another line here going from there to there. Now that's got the minimum gradient. You'll notice it fits within all the error bars. So yes, yes, all the way down. Just clips the top of that one and goes to there. Now again, I'll calculate my gradient. The gradient is from that point there, which is about 0.86. So I've got 0.86 in there. Down here, it's about 0.2. So I've got 0.2 over here. Divided by the change in x, which is from 5 minus 0.5. So I've got 5 minus 0.5. And that gives me a gradient of 0.143. So they're the two lines added that are the maximum and minimum lines of best fit. The dotted line down the middle is the original trend line added by Excel for the best, uh, the linear line of best fit. And that's the original equation for the line of best fit. To calculate the uncertainty, delta, it's just maximum minus minimum on 2. So the maximum gradient was 0.236, I've got there, minus the minimum, 0.143, divided by 2, and I get 0.05. So that's the delta value or the absolute uncertainty. To calculate the percent uncertainty, it's just the delta value, that is the absolute uncertainty, divided by the average value times 100 to make it a percent. So there's the 0.054 it actually is for delta, divided by 0.19, which is the average. Now you see that over here. So the average from Excel's trend line is 0.1909 or 0.191. So I've got that there, times 100, and that's 24%. So the uncertainty in the line of best fit based on the error bars is 24%. Now that's really high. Uh, you'd expect around about 5% for a good experiment in a classroom uh, experiment. The 24%, if you think of the ball being dropped and trying to measure the times it's quite difficult, so you expect a big error. The R squared value is a measure of the goodness of fit of the original trend line. So it's saying 99.7% of the uh, data fits within the line. So that's a good value. Anything over about 0.95 is pretty good. So that's the end of that.